Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Motorcast, another edition. Special guest online, Pro E85 driver, Steve Keys. How's it going, Steve? Hey, I'm doing good, Dave. How you doing? Pretty good. So you you, you were just out racing last week. and want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had the car out. Um, some of my E85 brothers went down to the Turkey Bash, and I couldn't make that trip. So uh, we took the car over to uh, US 41, and... Uh, we did pretty well. We went. Uh, we won six rounds. I double entered the car, and then in the uh, going into the fourth round, I made a driver's error and took us out. But the car did really well, and um, it was a good end to the uh, to the season for sure. So now, how many events did you run with the Pro E eighty five guys this year? Um, I ran two events. Um, had some um, difficulty to begin the season getting my car ready, um, and um, just really busy schedule for me so um made two events um uh did, did decent you know for just coming out for the year for a couple of events so i'm real happy with uh how the car ran and um, those guys are awesome you know it's a great group of guys that's all i could say I, I know you ran one event at the grove and uh kind of tore the track up there <laughs> yeah yeah that was actually a uh it was kind of a mistake, you know, I, I always tease Rich Black about uh, putting the thing on the bumper, and I've done it before, but, uh, yeah, that uh, that day, I, uh, I'm still learning this whole nitrous tune, and uh, I switched bottles uh, with a little bit uh, more volume and more pressure, and um, didn't change any settings on the progressive, so we, uh, we stood it on the bumper, I tried to shift out of it, and 200 feet later, it was still in the air, so... Uh, uh, I think at one time I got a photo of it. At one time, all four wheels were off the ground. So that was uh, that was a crazy ride. The crowd loved it, though, you know. And um, I think I won the highest wheelie bonus of that day, or something. So it uh, it was quite a quite fun. Yeah, I, know that, I saw the pictures of the marks you left on the track on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I think they're still looking for me, but um, <laughs> I gave them Rich Black's address, so uh, <laughs> yeah. they should be sending the bill to him. So. <laughs> Rich is probably listening right now. <laughs> I'm sure he is. So shout out to my E85 brothers. And I know Randy Lee's listening. That's a bad dude right there. He he come out as a rookie. He won the championship this year. Um, put a lot of us on the trailer, and he deserves all of it. So he's got a bad hot rod. Yeah, that was badass year for him coming out as a rookie and then winning it all. Yeah, yeah, just uh, crazy, crazy the way that that happens. But he's put in his time and. Um, I think Donnie Miller, you know, he, he built him one heck of a car, man. I mean, that thing is just a rocket ship. and uh, He gets out on you. He, he's 60 foot so hard. He gets out on you, and you just, he just, it's really hard to catch him, you know. It's, um, so uh, so my hat's off to him. He's, he's a heck of a racer, and he deserves everything he got this year. Yeah, congratulations again, Randy. Definitely. So now, Steve, how did you uh, begin your whole drag racing career? How, how long ago was it? Well, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, always loved cars and, um, uh, had some friends that had, had some motorcycles that were racing them. We did some street racing with the cars and stuff. And, um, so I just, one day I just got a crazy bug and went and bought a top sportsman motorcycle. And, uh, that was in the early or mid 1990s. Um, and we ran, ran that with some national circuit stuff with the IDBA and the pro star. And, um, that was a lot of fun, but, um, didn't have a lot of sponsors, you know, a lot of traveling and expenses. It was very expensive to compete on, you know, a national level like that. So, uh, we sold the bike and, um, I kind of just got away from it. You know, I, I stepped away. Um, I didn't race for almost 10 years and, um, the bug bit me again. And I went out and I bought a, uh, a, a Camaro that a guy was, he was bracket racing it and kind of street racing it. And um, we did a bunch of chassis changing on it and kind of built us a pretty cool bracket car, um, you know, and, and just kind of went from there. That was like in 2014. So, yeah, like I said, I, I took about a 10-year step away. So, and, you know, and then ended up with the Malibu and um, by far the best car I've ever owned. And the car just, the car is just a, you know, it's a winning car. It, it definitely... Um, I could just do my thing. The car will do it, you know. Now, do you do you have any drag racing heroes or inspirations? 
not really. No, no. Randy Lee now, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, no, not. Um, no, I mean I grew up watching it and stuff, you know. And we went, you know, when uh, you know forty one first started and the IHRA Nationals and stuff, we'd go watch those guys, you know. But um, you know, um, followed Angel, you know, being on the bike scene, you know, I raced with her a lot in IDBA. That's you know where she came up through. Um, so um, I guess you could say Angel. My daughter's in love with Angel. She's probably listening right now. So um, uh, my daughter just absolutely loves her, but. Uh, you know, not uh, not nobody that nobody big. You know that I can think of. You know, other than her. Now, how did you meet up with the pro eighty eighty five guys? Well, um, uh, four years ago, um, the other manager of US forty one had asked me to take over their bracket program, and at the time, we would do the bracket races, and the eighty five guys would would race as well with us. And that's kind of how I met up with them and met Dwayne. And, and um, you know, I at that time I had an altered. I had a front engine altered. And when I bought the Malibu, I contacted Dwayne and said, "Hey, you know, can I can I race with you?" And he took me in. And um, I haven't made too many races. First couple of years with the Malibu, we had some motor issues and stuff. So you know, I haven't made too many E85 races. But uh, they could still still consider me part of the crew. And um, that, that's uh, kind of the story there. So what's the plan for next year? You're gonna get out there more with these boys? Oh yeah, yeah. Next year we're um, uh, let the guys know at the track. I've been running and helping at the racetrack and running the bracket program for four years, which I just totally enjoyed. But it's, it's time for me to do my own thing. So definitely gonna be uh, racing with the '85 guys. Um, I've got a meeting with Rich Black with uh, on the racetrack. So me and him got a little grudge thing going on, and. Um, I'm gonna have to put him on the trailer so I so he can uh, kind of be quiet. You know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, um, I'm I'm gonna try to make you know as many of those races as I can with them. Um, uh, we got some uh, you know some chassis changing. We're gonna do a little bit on the car and uh, some small upgrades, but nothing nothing too crazy. So, you so get, yeah. are you gonna be at the first big event at Memorial Day weekend at the Grove? Yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. Yep, I'm shooting for that race and have the car all ready to go, um, you know, so uh, there will be a change on the car. The boss lady who uh, who signs all the checks and pays all the bills said that uh, we got to put some wheelie bars on her, so so the crazy wheelies are probably over with. Maybe maybe one event or so I may take them off and put something on for the crowd, but uh, she calls the shots, you know. So you, you, your wife backs you up in uh, drag racing? Yeah, she does. Um, uh, her her father was a mechanic and uh, was really into cars, so um, uh, she backs me and um, has spent I don't know how much countless hours at the track. You know, traveling when I had the bike, and um, uh, we just traveled. We just took the car a couple weeks ago, three or a month ago. We just took it to uh, Martin, uh, Michigan, and and uh, raced up there for a three day race. And she went with, and uh, so uh, she goes when she can. And I appreciate that too. Now, does your daughter like drag racing? Oh yeah, yep. She uh, she loves it. She actually grew up at forty one when I had my bike. She would um, uh, she would go with me all the time to the track. Absolutely loves the track. Um, she's got three little ones at home, um, so it's hard for her now to get get to the track. But um, you know, we go when we can. And um, being in the bike world, I still know a lot of those guys that race with NHRA. So we try to make a one or two NHRA races a year, and you know we go hang out with them in the pits and stuff like that, just kind of reminiscent of old times, I guess. Well, that's what you need, you know, three three grandkids. You know, you need some junior dragsters. <laughs> yeah, I know everybody's teasing me about it. You know, they're they're a few years away. My oldest is uh, four, um, and uh, so they're they're a few years away. But I'm sure sure we'll uh you know we'll put him in a junior dragster at some point in time i'm sure that's coming yeah you know once once they get into drag racing then they'll don't want to start driving probably oh yeah yeah i'm sure yeah i'm sure they've already been to the track a couple times um for an hour or so just kind of hanging out you know but um at this age they're uh they're all over the place you know they're like little rocket ships 
Yeah, nowadays you can get the kids to do anything, you know, besides sitting at home, play video games, just get them out of the damn house. It's a good thing. I, I agree with that, hundred percent. You know, when we were growing up, you know, we heck, I was never in the house. You know, play tag, baseball, football, and you know, running around. You know, putting baseball cards in the spokes of your bike so it sound like a motorcycle. You know, and uh, yeah, just crazy stuff like that. You to know? the to so, the to the street street lights come on, then you come back home. Exactly, exactly. Yep, 100%. Yep. So now, what, what was it like for you, uh, Steve, to go down our drag racing track for the first time ever? Um, nervous. Very nervous. You know, I, um, I, I, I bought the motorcycle and uh, didn't know much about drag racing uh, motorcycle. Um, had, had some friends that were doing it, and they, they helped me out along the way. But... Uh, yeah, I just didn't want to screw up, you know. I, I mean, I, you know, I didn't want to, you know, not miss the turn for the return road, you know. Uh, you know, just make, you know, kind of, kind of look silly up there, you know. And I'm sure I did. Heck, heck I still look silly up there now. So, but, uh, uh, you know, but that that was the biggest thing. I was, I was nervous, you know. Uh, but then once you get the hang of it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a drug, you know. You just can't. Uh, you can never get it out of your system. It just sticks with you. Now, t- tell us a little bit about your uh, Malibu. Uh, the Malibu um, was built in 2007 by a guy uh, over in Ohio. Um, and uh, he, he raced it successfully over at Norwalk, Ohio. Um, the, the car itself won two track championships, two divisional championships over there. Um, and then, um, he passed away. His son had the car for a little while. Um, and then I ended up with it, but it's, um, it's a three quarter chassis car. Um, right now it, 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 it used to have a 582 on it right now. It's currently got a 498. Um, and we spray the heck out of it when we can, you know, um, and, um, very competitive car. I mean, um, what can I say about it? I, the, the first race, uh, this is crazy. The first race, I bought the car and uh, brought it home, had it had it for a week, took it, did some testing with it. And um, the first race out was a 5,000 to win uh, bracket race. I entered the car. The car went eight rounds, put it in the winner's circle the very first race. So um, that tells you a little bit about the car's pedigree. It's just... Um, it's won multiple rounds. It's, it's been to multiple finals, um, and uh, it's it's just uh, it's it's going to be a hard car to let go. Let's put it that way. It, it, the car just uh, certain cars have it, and it has it. You know. So what's the fastest you've gone with that car? Uh, the fastest I've gone with it. I haven't ran it. Uh, the fastest has gone in the quarter uh, is right at an eight ninety. Um, in the eighth, it's been five sixty. Uh, 558, 560. Um, that was with the 582. Uh, last year at the beginning of the season, I was getting ready for 85, and we ended up blowing a head gasket, so I never got it fully tuned in. Um, so um, I can't honestly say what the fastest it would go. You know, um, with the smaller motor, um, it's a great bracket motor, but uh, we got to spray it pretty heavily to run the 890s with these guys. So. Um, Hopefully here, you know, within a year or two, we'll, we'll, we'll get the 582, you know, get it back going and, you know, and uh, have something a little little stronger for these guys. Now, what, what kind of tires are you running on that car? That, that car's got a uh, 32, uh, 32, 14 and a half wide by 15 tire. Uh, it's got a very big tire under it for a, for a small body car, you know, Malibu's you know, aren't real wide, so it's, uh, it's more tire than not underneath there, um, so it's, um, got, uh, yeah, it's tough, it's got some steamrollers under there. Now, when you take this car out, how many crew members do you have with you? Um, usually, um, just my, my best friend Tony goes with me, and, you know, and then Laura goes, my wife, um, and, um, that's about it, really, you know, um, the car, the car doesn't really, uh, need a lot we put some gas in it it's got an alternator on it um you know we throw some 85 in there and we go race it you know the car has really never been one of those cars that needed a lot of attention a lot of work 
Um, most of the time, I pull it back to the uh, back to the pits. So I get out of the car, I don't even look at it. I throw, you know, we, we open the hood, just make sure everything's good in there. Close the hood, throw some fuel in it. We sit down and we, you know, and we talk and wait for the next round. You know, so um, um, just a couple of guys. That's it. You know, my wife, my best friend. That's about it. So not much uh, preparation to get the car ready for a weekend. No, no, it's actually kind of boring to be honest with you. You know, um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's um, that's just the type of car it is. It just doesn't really require a lot of uh, maintenance. You know, we change oil regularly and check the valves and stuff like that. Just your basic racing stuff, you know. But um, it doesn't require much uh, much maintenance. It just goes. So, which is which is a good thing, you know. Yeah. Now, when you're on the track, Steve, do you have any uh, pre-race rituals or superstitions? Um, yeah, I don't know if they're superstitions or not, but uh, rituals, you know, when I get up there, I always leave my helmet open, my face mask on my helmet. And uh, probably the biggest thing I do is right before I stage the car, pre-stage the car, you know, I slam my helmet face mask down. And it's kind of like it's game time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't pay attention to who's in the lane next to me. It doesn't matter if they're a big name, small name. You know, my, my deal is, you know, I stare at the tree. You know, I talk to myself. It's my tree, you know, and I'm going to own the race, you know. And that, that's how I go about it. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. But, uh, you know, that, that's kind of my thing. I, I don't really pay attention to who's next to me other than, you know, and that's just, you know, slam the face mask down and it's time to go. Well, you know how that works. You know how that works. Anyone who's next to you, if they could be your best friend or they're your enemy at the damn starting line. Yes. Yep, that's <laughs> true. Yep. Yep, exactly. My main goal, my only goal, is to put them on the trailer before <laughs> they put me on the trailer. I mean, that's it, you know? And I've raced countless times with the 85 guys, with the local bracket guys, and we go up there and we have a good time. But, yeah, they're, they're you know, they're who I want to be. But then when we get done, we shake hands. We have a beer after the racing's over with. We, you know, we laugh, we joke, and um, you know. So, uh, but they're definitely enemy number one when they're sitting in the lane next to you. Yep. So as you get, so as you get down to the finish line, and it's a different story again. Yes. Yep. Now, uh, do you have you done any eighth mile racing? Yeah, uh, most of my bracket racing stuff is eighth mile. Um, so what, you know, do you, what, what do you what do you pre- what do you prefer eighth mile or quarter mile? Oh, I, I prefer eighth mile, hundred percent. It's uh, that's just a, a personal opinion. Um, most of the tracks are going to that now. All of ice or race events are all eighth mile. Um, almost all the bracket races, other than maybe uh, Route sixty six around here, is eighth mile. That I think that I could think of, but there, there could be others. But um, you know, the eighty-five guys, we run the quarter. You know, it's big speed. You know, we're running one hundred fifty-five, one hundred fifty mile an hour plus. So, you know, some guys are even faster than that. And um, you know, so that's a lot of fun. But as far as like just straight up competition, you know, everything happens really fast in the eighth mile. And um, if you're not on your game, um, you're going home. You know. Um, there's not a lot of room for error in the quarter mile. There's a lot more back and forth. You kind of see where your guy's at. You kind of, you know, um, in the eighth mile, it just happens so fast. You, you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, in the quarter mile, when you get to the, about the eighth mile, that could be where the whole uh, ball game could change right there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you kind of see where your competitor's at, you know. Um, you kind of can gauge your worst where you're at. And, um, you know, being in the car – when you're in a car long enough, you kind of you kind of get that feeling of okay, here comes the here comes a thousand foot strike. You know where am I at? And like I said, with the eighth mile stuff, it just happens so fast. It's, um, you know, you really got to uh, you really got to pay attention. So so that's why I like it. It's just it's just a faster paced, um, you know, a lot closer, tighter racing. You know. So do you have to do any changes to the car? To, you know, to to do a quarter mile, eighth mile. shock adjustments um i right now i've got the four link set to obviously to wheelie you know um so i just kind of left it like that for the last couple years bracket racing um i really haven't messed with changing the four link too much um we may do that a little bit in the off season um just 
try to get the front end down a little bit so I could hit it a little harder out of the line. Because um, I got, you know, that Randy Lee, man, I, I you know, I got to try to keep up with him in that 60 foot. So um, we're going to try to try to make some changes there. But um, right now we haven't really messed with it, other than shock and duck. So now I, I know you took uh, like 10 years off, but uh, after all the years of uh, drag racing, what, what still keeps you passionate about drag racing? Um, you just can't get uh, enough of the speed, you know, and the, 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 the smell of race gas when you go to a racetrack. I know it drives my wife crazy. She can't stand it, but uh, it just gets in your blood, you know. It's like, a, like I said, it's like a drug, you know, just... Um, Every time I think and I tell my friends, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sell the car. I'm just gonna be done," you know. And you just you just go to a race and you just get that much drawn in. I mean, I had so much fun this past weekend, you know, just uh, racing with the guys, and um, uh, it's just um, it's a family thing, you know. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Everybody treats you good, you know. You treat them good, they treat you good. And I have made so many friends drag racing over the years. I mean, it's just crazy the amount of people that I've made friends with and that's probably the biggest thing that keeps me going it's just a giant family so. yeah that's that's what I talk about in every interview how the drag racing is one big family and it gets bigger and bigger you meet more and more people as you keep going through the years yeah yeah you know and people people you've never met you got problems with your car you got problems with your bike whatever I mean I've had people I've never met just you know be like laying over my hood you know, you know, and, and, and help me out with the bike and the car. I mean, you know, a, a perfect example. I went to the first Great Lakes event, uh, race for the 85 this year, and I had trouble with my carburetor. Johnny B, the two-time champion, he says, hey, I've got an extra carb laying in my truck. Why don't you use it? I turn around, and I got, like, four guys from the 85 group, and they're tearing my car apart, you know, to help me out. I mean, just, I mean, that that that's cool, you know, that. My dad was there that day, and, and uh, he hadn't been to a race with me in a long time. He even said on the way home, he said, "Those are, that's a great group of guys. He said, they didn't even have to help you, and they jumped in and helped. So, yeah, that's that com- camaraderie, man. Yeah, and that's what drag racing does. It's just, you don't even know the person. I mean, I know those guys, but, you know, I'm just, you know, you, you see somebody needs some help, and you, it's just part of the family. They're just part of the family, you know, so... Right. Um, yeah, you'll get you'll get one guy saying, "Hey, I'm not going to be able to make the next round. I'm broke." They'll they'll all pitch in and get that car going to make that round. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Just so, like just like me interviewing all you guys, I've never met any of you guys yet, but I feel like I know you all you guys now. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I appreciate that. You know, it um, it says a lot for our group. You know, and those guys should be proud of themselves because they they conduct themselves with the utmost respect. And, you know, um, you know, running the bracket program and just meeting them. I mean, I didn't know any of them, you know, back four years ago. I mean, I may, may have known a couple, but just from bracket racing. But, you know, and um, they've always treated me really good. So um, try to return the favor. But I did promise Randy I will stop by the pits at the Grove and uh, say hi to everybody. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, you definitely got to do that, you know. You know, and, uh, yeah, swing by. I mean, those guys... They've always got food, and, I mean, Frank Morgan's out there, like, smoking on his grill, you know, like, I mean, just all sorts of crazy stuff mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, you know? Frank with the jerk chicken, and uh, Timothy, yeah. Timothy said he'd be cooking, too. Yeah, yeah, There's, you know, Randy's wife, she cooks, and I, I don't think Randy cooks, I, I, you know, he's a great drag racer, I don't think he could cook, though, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> But no, Colleen, I mean, they, they just, you know, Rich Black's wife and Helen, I mean, they just, you know, you got to come out. Anybody can come out. You know, our pits are always open. We, we love signing autographs, you know, at the Grove. We give out, you know, uh, we pull up. What's really cool is we pull up as a group after our first round, and, you know, we give out a bunch of flyers and signed stuff and pictures. And, I mean, um, you know, I just can't, I, I, I just can't say enough about it, man. It's just, it's fun. It's, 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 it's a blast. Really is. Then you got a big fan like Brian Kramer that feeds everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought these guys were joking with me. You know, we go to this uh, that first event, you know, and they're like, "Oh no, you gotta go see our super fan Brian." You know, he, you know, he feeds us all. You know, if you're hungry, you know, if, like 
like I'm not being fed by all the other racers too, you know. Right. And uh, you know, and I go over there, and these guys are stuffing burgers and stuff, you know. And yeah, it's um, man, we got some great fans, and you know, and that's uh, that's what it's about too, you know. Um, you know, we had some fans at the bracket race of 41 show up. They're in my trailer hanging out, and, you know, giving me a hug, like, you know, hey, you know, Pro 85's in the house, you know, and I'm just there bracket racing, you know, so, so that was cool, you know, but uh, yeah. that's probably, the, like you said, you asked me about the passion, and that's what, that's where it's at, you know. If you can't have fun doing this, you're in the wrong sport, because ain't none of us getting rich, you know. Um, uh, you know, it's just, we're not at that level, you know. Yeah. Um, there's very few people that make money at this sport, so if you you can't have fun you know you should probably sell your car yeah brian kramer told me a couple weeks ago make sure i stop by the kramer area and get some uh, food and beer <laughs> oh yeah definitely yeah yeah so you're gonna try and make up the make it to the uh, memorial that uh, your plan or? yeah that's the plan man okay well i'd uh, definitely look forward to, to meeting you you know yeah, last last year me and my wife only made it out for uh, one event at the Grove because our our car was giving us problems all year, so we we had to get a ride to get out there. We went to uh, the you know the Jet Car Show one night of fire. Oh yeah, the Pro eighty five guys ran that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the that's the Labor Day event. Um, I actually have my car there this year. That, that, uh, for the uh, first day, that, that, that's actually the day I did that ginormous wheelie. Um, but that's a that's a fun event, man. That's a, that's a good one. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot, lot of good. You know, yeah, Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day weekend. Those are the big, big ones. Yeah, yeah, and that place is packed. I mean, you know, those guys up there, they they, they got a good good thing going with those events. They've been going, I don't know how many years, you know, a long time, I guess, you know, to, to have that type of crowd, but, uh, you know, so, uh, so, definitely enjoyable weekends, you know. So, what are your favorite tracks to run on, Steve? Um, I like the Grove. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a 41 guy, you know, I've been working there and helping run the track and the bracket program, you know, uh, you know, but, uh, Hands down, though, you know, um, there is not a track anywhere in the country like Norwalk, Ohio. Um, if you've never been to Norwalk, it's an experience. Um, you know, they, uh, the place is like, I mean, like you can eat off of everywhere on the, at, at the racetrack. It's a racetrack, and like, you, could, you know, it's just ultra clean. Um, the people are friendly. The track, and the, I mean, it's just like glass. Um beautiful like landscaping and heck they even come around in the morning you know i went out there two three weeks ago for a for a big bracket race a big high dollar bracket race and they come around on a golf cart with free coffee and donuts and juice to every racer there was 450 of it and they went around to every trailer with a golf cart loaded with food i mean you know uh, get a pound of ice cream for a dollar you know it, uh, it's just an experience. So, hands down, um, there's no other racetrack in the world like Norwalk, Ohio. Now, where, where do you get all your fire safety equipment from? Um, you know, I try to, uh, you know, a big thing with me is I, I try to uh, buy a lot of my stuff through local local vendors, you know, um, you know, Chicago Connection. Um, I bought stuff from White's Pit Stop, try to support him. Um, you know, I've got some sponsors on my car. They're all local stuff. I, you know, I do, I do purchase some stuff from Jags and from Summit, like everybody else does. You know, I mean, they're just the heavy hitters in the market. But um, you know, one thing, one thing about me is, you know, all of my faith, my safety stuff is top of the line, Stroud stuff. You know, um, Spec 15 suits and helmets, and you know, um, one thing about this sport is you have to be safe. Because anything can happen at any time, and you know, you know, when you're running at that speed, um, I've got a family, you know, and I'm sure they want me to, to see me come back, you know. Well, my wife maybe not some days, you know, she gets mad at me, but uh, you know, yeah. but all, all, all kidding aside, you know, um, you got to be safe, and, and um, it amazes me being working 
been at the racetrack for so many years, it amazes me some people don't take that so seriously, you know. Um, so, um, you know, and the E85 guys and the bracket guys, you know, we got to run diapers on our cars now. we got to have all the safety stuff, the suits and the helmets and the hats or the gloves and the boots. You know, if you're going fast enough, you got to have shoes on your car and stuff like that. I mean, you know, cage certification. That's, you know, you got to do it. You just got to do it. Now, have, have you had any accidents throughout your drag racing career? I have not in my car. Um, I've been down um, on my motorcycle. Fortunately, it wasn't um, really fast. I, it was at the starting line. I, I launched in, in the... Uh, Rear hub sprocket shattered, broke on the bike, and kind of sent me into the wall. But um, I've had some close calls, you know. Um, but um, I've gotten lucky. I have my front engine altered that uh, blew a trans line. I didn't know it, and I drove the car down the track with uh, trans fluid spewing out the back. Um, so um, I've had some close calls and some lucky calls, but um, no, I have not had any, thank goodness so far, I've not had a. Uh, had an accident. Well, knock on wood, you won't have any. Yes, for sure. For sure. But, uh, you know, that's that's kind of a, a risk we take, you know. Um, yeah. You know, well, you know, we all know what we're strapping ourselves into and rocket ships and, you know, and they, uh, they're they very dangerous. So, you know, um, but. Uh, oh, yeah. So now. uh what what uh, milestones have you reached in your drag racing career so far? Any? Um, I'd probably say you know uh, when I had the when I had the motorcycle, you know, we were a top ten plate holder in IDBA Pro Star one year. That was a big milestone. Um, you know the uh, getting this Malibu and taking it out in the first race and winning a big money bracket race. Um, I mean, that stuff's unheard of. That's a huge milestone, you know. Um, uh, you know, and it just, I guess just the overall experience of being at the track and, you know, it's, it, it, it's all just encompassing. You know? All right, now let me ask you a few fun questions here, Steve. Sure. Out, outside of drag racing, do you have any other hobbies? <laughs> Yeah, I'm very busy. Um, I'm a big time deer hunter, um, and uh, love to deer hunt. Uh, big time hunter, period. Love to, you know, if it walks or flies, I pretty much hunt it. You know, um, love to fish, uh, especially crappie fishing. You know, love to love to crappie fish, and um, you know, we do, we got some show cars we take out. And, you know, cruise around at times, and me and the wife and stuff. You know. And, Probably the biggest hobby right now, though, I'll be honest with you, is my grandkids, you know. Um, I, I know I drive guys crazy. They follow me online, you know, and, you know, and I got, like, a million pictures of my grandkids and stuff. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, Dave, there ain't nothing in this world like a grandchild, you know. And uh, so that's probably my biggest hobby right now is, um, you know, trying to spend as much time. And I probably don't spend as much as I should, but trying to spend as much time as I can with them. Um, especially when they're young, they're just so much fun, you know, just full of energy. You know, if I could, I tell you what, if I could bottle all of their energy up, I would out 60 Randy Lee, I'm telling you. You <laughs> yeah. know, if I could bottle all that up and put it in my car, you know, he wouldn't have a prayer, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they're just so much fun. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. I, I always stay busy. Um, I never sit down, it drives my wife crazy. I, I, I can't sit on the couch. I, I don't. I don't watch a ton of TV. I'm, I'm either in my shop or I'm out in the woods or out on the lake or out at the racetrack, you know. Yeah, is it, isn't it about crappie time now? It is, it is. As a matter of fact, we just got back last week. I, I went down to Shelbyville and uh, we caught some crappie on Friday, but then that crazy rain came and so we come back home and that's how I ended up at 41 racing on Sunday. I wasn't planning on racing and, you know, we, we were on a crappie trip, but... Uh, you know, deer season's just getting started. The good stuff's just getting started here November 1st, you know, with the bucks running around. So so if anybody needs me, I'll be in a tree. You can find me, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, send a message by a squirrel. You know, they're usually running around. Yeah. 
Now, have you won any uh, trophies or any any that kind of stuff like that throughout your racing career? Uh, trophy wise, no, no, not really. Um, you know, some car show stuff here and there, but um, you know, most of the stuff that I've raced for has just been for money stuff. You know, uh, the bracket race stuff. Obviously, they give out these big checks. I, I don't have one of those big checks. You know. Um, I should, I, you know, I told Laura, I'd joke with her, I should get, you know, a bunch of them, just make them myself and just fill them in and put them all over my trailer so I can kind of intimidate these guys, you know, but, uh, but, um, no, I haven't, um, haven't really won any, uh, trophies, so to speak, I guess you'd say, but, um, there's always a first for that though. You know, Randy Lee's getting a big one at the end of this year. Maybe I should go after that next year. Now, if any, if anyone is listening to this interview right now and they're thinking about you know getting into drag racing, what, what kind of advice would you give that person? Don't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's uh, it's very expensive. Um, you gotta have a passion for it, but uh, you know, you just gotta get out there and do it. You know, my biggest thing would be, you know, is uh, you know. Find somebody like, you know, like me. I'll take anybody for riding my car. I've got an extra seat. Dave, you want to go for riding my car on Memorial Day next year? I'll put you in there, you know. Um, uh, you know, go experience it and see what it's about because, um, you know, and start small. You know, don't. that's the biggest thing. I, I, you see a lot of guys, and I even did it with my motorcycle and I shouldn't have, but, you know, uh, start small, take baby steps, learn, learn what it takes to be good at it. Um, because, you know, the thing in racing, especially like bracket racing now, you know, the 85 guys are run on a, a specific 890 index, but, you know, the thing with bracket racing or drag racing in general is you don't have to be fast to win. You just got to be consistent, you know, and, um, so that'd be my advice. Just start small and go experience it. Yeah, you got to cut a good light. Yes, you do. Yeah, it's all, it's all on the tree, you know, it's. Everything is pretty much won or lost, pretty much on the on the tree. Yep. So yes, you're you're correct about that. Now, if you can do time travel and then go back into time, would you do anything differently with the drag racing career? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't think so. I really don't. You know, um, the kind of the way it went down, you know, with the bike and. Being able to take my daughter and spend a bunch of time at the racetrack with my family when I had that, when she was young and growing up. And then it kind of, even though I took that, you know, eight to ten years off, it, it really kind of opened my eyes to what I need to be doing versus what I was doing, you know, um, with as far as racing and stuff. So, um, no, I, you know, I, I don't really think I would change anything. Um, I think I've been successful at what I've done. Um, I've enjoyed it. I've had fun doing it. I've met, like I said, I've met so many cool people. Um, I can't even count how many people I've met that just, uh, are so much fun. And, um, so I think I just leave it alone the way it is. All right. Now, if you and the family ever have time to go on a vacation, what's your favorite vacation getaway? Colorado. We love Colorado. Um, we spent time out there before. And, um, we just, uh, my wife is a big outdoors person. She hunts, she fishes, fishes as well with me. She hunts with me. Um, we like to hike, we like to get outside and Colorado by far is an outdoors men's paradise. So, um, that's the, uh, that's the place for us. Awesome. Now, what's your favorite food to eat? Oof. Uh, probably steak. No, is your wife, your, wife, your wife a good cook? My wife is an excellent cook. What's your favorite? Di- what's your favorite dish that she makes? Um, I'd have to say probably uh, her spaghetti or lasagna. It's a toss up. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, it it really is. You know, and she's not Italian. That's what's funny. I mean, she's got German German in her. So um, hmm. you know, but uh, man, she makes a mean spaghetti and a mean lasagna. You know. But um, that, that's you know now that's if I could get her to cook you know I mean when 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 the kids were younger you know she cooked every day you come home nice meal she's an excellent cook you know now I got to twist her arm to get her to cook for me once or twice a week you know but uh, I understand though 
Yeah. 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 All right, so Steve, what's your favorite beverage to drink? <laughs> uh, that's pretty easy. I, I, I drink way entirely too much Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yep. that crap's no good for you, man. I know that, and my wife told me that. The doctor has told me that. You know, my friends tell me. I'm just stubborn, I guess. Well, what's your favorite movie of all time? Uh, favorite movie. Um, Better Off Dead with John Cusack. That 60, whatever, 8, 60, I think it's a 68 or 67 RS Camaro. That's off the hook, man. That is my favorite movie of all time. All right, what's your favorite music to listen to? Um, love to listen to country, uh, especially old older country. Um, so yeah, country music for sure. Now, when you were a kid, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? Uh, favorite cartoon would be Tom and Jerry. Those guys are crazy, you know? Yeah. All right, most embarrassing moment on the track? <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Dave, because uh, that happened this year, actually. <laughs> um, something tells me that you may have known about that, but uh, no, I... Um, <laughs> I was running a, I was running a bracket race. I was actually working. I, I wasn't running, and then I didn't have my car. And um, when we send the junior dragsters down, one of us goes down to the end of the uh, the first return road and makes sure that the juniors know where to turn, just as a safety measure. Most of them do, but we always have somebody standing on the side of the track, on the edge of the track, just to show them where to turn. I was heading down there on the scooter. And I caught a June bug in my forehead at about 20 mile an hour on the scooter. And I went down, Dave. And I tore my arms up, my knees up. I was bleeding all over the place. Oh, I, got, I got kids and junior dragsters because I slid right past them on the pavement. They're just staring at me like, you know, like I was an asteroid or something. Um, so, yeah, I haven't lived that down. Um, I've got a new nickname. Everybody calls me June Bug. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that, that is by far the most embarrassing moment ever. And I wasn't even on the racetrack surface, you know, I was, I was on this, I was on the return road. Wow. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, looking back now, it's quite funny. And I know the guys that are listening right now are just cracking up laughing. Uh, but, um, you know, it, uh, I, I'm telling you, man, I, I get teased about it. All the time. All the time. All right. What's been the fondest memory of your drag racing career? Uh, fondest memory. Oof. Oh, man. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, boy, that's really, uh, that's really difficult, you know. Um, maybe maybe joining the pro pro e eighty five guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean that's that's uh, that's obviously a good one. I, I was thinking of something like 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 way more dramatic. Maybe I'm just trying to be over too over dramatic, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll stick with that. Dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Steve, I want to thank you uh, very much for taking time to finally do this interview. Oh sure, sure, yeah, it's been uh, been fun, you know. And I, I really appreciate what you're doing, man. You're getting getting people's names out there and groups out there. You know, I've listened to a lot of your interviews, and uh, it's a lot of fun, man. I, I I had a good time. So thanks for thanks for inviting me. Any, any final words? Uh, no. Just uh, everybody be safe. You know. Uh, shout out to my family, my friends, and everybody else that's listening or will listen, or maybe they told me they were going to listen and they aren't going to listen. You know? But. Uh, and thank you, Dave. I really appreciate you. Thanks, oh, you're sir. welcome. I'm, I'm glad you had fun, and uh, we'll we'll do another one in the future. You know, we'll get get, get that car running next year, and we'll we'll see how you're doing. We'll update you. Okay, that sounds good, man. And we'll um, I'll see you Memorial Day. I'll have my car there, and um, I'm gonna bring a helmet. So you get ready. I'm gonna strap your butt in there, and we're gonna go for a ride. All right, sounds good. Well, you have a great night, buddy. Okay. All right, you too. Thank ba you. Bye bye. Bye bye.